Hello everyone and welcome to another Flux tutorial. My name is Zach Peterson and in this tutorial video, we're gonna show you all how to get started using the analog to digital converter in an Arduino Mega. And in this video, we're actually going to create a shield board that uses the analog to digital converter in the Arduino Mega. Now, in the shield board that we're going to create, we're going to add a couple of sensors onto the board. And before we do that, I'm actually going to show you some of the things that you need to do to first understand what the Arduino is doing when it collects an uh, analog signal, and also what you need to do with setting the reference for the analog to digital converter. There is an internal reference in the Arduino. I'm going to show you how to select an external reference for the sensors that we're going to use in this project. So to get started using the analog to digital converter on an Arduino Mega, first of course you need to decide whether or not you're going to connect some sensor directly to the analog interface or if you're going to use a shield. So in this example or in this tutorial, I'm actually going to show you how to do this on a shield board. Now I think the next thing that's uh, pretty important is of course to understand how an ADC works. So first thing I'm going to do is explain how an ADC works and what the reference voltage is because this is actually pretty important on an Arduino before you can pair up a sensor with your analog to digital converter you actually need to make sure that you select the right reference voltage for that ADC. So first I want to take a look at uh, this little quick presentation that I've started working on. So here let's just suppose that we have a zero to V ref uh, scale that we're using to collect an analog signal. Now if we look at the Arduino Mega pinout you'll notice here that we have several different analog inputs and they're all marked analog in numbered from A0 to A15 but then you can see right up here in this corner of the board we have this one pin that is labeled A ref. Well, this is the reference voltage for these analog inputs. And essentially what the reference voltage means is the reference voltage is used as a comparison and it is then used to essentially uh, quantize your input analog signal. So let's just suppose for a moment that this is representing a 10-bit ADC. So that means this 10-bit ADC is going to have 2 to the 10th power states that we can use to quantize our input analog signal. So our input analog signal is going to vary between 0 and then VREF. In this case, in our Arduino, it's actually AREF. So other ADCs will label it VREF, Arduino labels it AREF. Now in this 10-bit ADC, with there being 2 to the 10th power states, of course, that means that we could have 2 to the 10th power or 10, uh, 1,024 states. So that means that each of these divisions that I have here in this scale is going to be equal to whatever a ref is divided by 1,024. So this, uh, we'll call it uh, delta V is just equal to a ref divided by 1024. So essentially whenever you put this input analog signal in it is being quantized into a bit stream and that digital number that represents the state of the analog signal at any given time is going to be some multiple of this value. So let's just say for a moment that a ref is set to 5 volts and I divide this by 1024, that means each of these divisions is going to be equal to about uh, 4.8 millivolts. So here if we have F A ref equals 5V, then delta V equals, what did we say it was? About 4.88 millivolts. So this is how your ADC is going to be quantizing your input analog signal. So here when we look on the Arduino Mega, you can see this A ref pin essentially allows you to set this scale here. So let's say for example, we had a sensor and it outputs from zero to five volts. Well, we would then want to set A ref to at least five volts in order to properly interface with that sensor. 
if we were, say, working with a sensor that put out from zero to, let's say, 100 millivolts, well, then we wouldn't want a ref to also be five volts. We would actually want a ref to be much smaller. In that case, we would want it to be also close to 100 millivolts. So one important aspect of getting really accurate measurements here is you actually want your analog signal to try and fill up a decent amount of this space in between zero volts and a ref. And that's going to give you a very accurate measurement here for your analog signal. So that means when you're setting up your Arduino Mega, you need to select the correct value for a ref if you're going to use an external reference. Or what you can do is you can actually take advantage of the internal reference inside of this microcontroller. So there are two types of references, internal and external. With the internal reference, it's actually built into the microcontroller. And so if I just Google ATmega2560 and I take a look at the data sheet, I'll be able to see what microchip has set for the internal reference for this chip. So let's take a look at the data sheet. So if I just search for a ref after this data sheet comes up, eventually, if I just keep going, I'll eventually find here what the internal reference voltage is. So you can see right here in this line, internal reference voltages of nominally 1.1 volt, 2.56 volts, or whatever value you give for a VCC are provided on chip. So these are your optional internal references, or you can then uh, use an external reference. So what are your options for an external reference? Well, the simplest way to apply an external reference is to basically just use one of these power pins. You could use one of these power pins as an, exter as an external reference. Another option is a precision ADC reference chip. And there are actually reference chips that you can select that will uh, uh, provide a very specific voltage to this pin, the AREF pin, on this Arduino or on any other ADC. Um, so a great example of some that I've used in other uh, projects are uh, from Intersil. So Intersil voltage references. So these are very highly stable voltage references that are actually used in space applications, but you can use them in any other applications. But you can see here they have rad hard voltage references that are used for aerospace applications. Um, so these have a pretty wide range. You can see that this particular one um, that I'm opening up here um, is designed, of course, radiation hardened, um, but it's also designed to have ultra low noise. The other advantage of this type of a chip if used as an external reference for like this AREF pin is that um, it has very low temperature drift. So that's one of the advantages of using this type of chip for this AREF pin. Now, another advantage here is, let's say that you were powering this uh, board up to five volts. You'll notice that this thing always puts out 4.096. So if your power, your five volt power dropped off a little bit, let's say it dropped down to 4.5 volts, this voltage would still continue to be 4.096. So assuming that the rest of the system didn't shut off, your analog interface would continue to quantize at this voltage, even though the power is dropping off a little bit. So it keeps that voltage uh, applied to the reference pin very stable. And that way, this quantization value that you're measuring here will not change, even though you could have temperature drift or even though you could have some voltage drop out in the power. So now let's take a look at how we can add some sensors into an Arduino shield. And then we can uh, see how that will interface with the analog to digital converter in the microcontroller. So I'm inside Flux, and uh, I'm going to do this using the public library that's inside Flux. Um, so you can see here, I actually have a template for an Arduino shield. Um, if you sign up and start using Flux, you can actually find uh, templates like this uh, that you can use to build your own shield boards. Um, so I will uh, leave a link uh, in the description that uh, shows a video of, of how to do this. Now, um, here, if you look at the pinout, um, you'll notice here that we have all of our uh, analog inputs for the analog to digital converter, and then we have our AREF pin right here. 
Now, um, before we start adding in sensors, real quick, you'll notice one thing here in the data sheet, which is that the uh, AVCC pin supplies the power for the analog to digital converter, not the A ref pin. So this is important because on the uh, shield board, you're not actually hooking up a supply to the analog to digital converter, meaning you're not supplying a VCC directly. You're actually just supplying the analog reference pin right here on the shield board. So keep that in mind and don't get confused if you don't see an a VCC pin on the shield. So um, the temperature sensor that I want to use is actually this one and um, to use it I just need to drag this in and you can see here we already have terminals for VDD and ground and then our output. So this is a pretty simple uh, sensor to use. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up the data sheet. Um, I can do this by either just opening the part and then scrolling through the properties or I can look here in the properties panel directly. Um, and if I just open this, it'll go over here to this TI uh, data sheet. And you can see here, all I really need is just a bypass capacitor. I need to hook this thing up to either uh, or this uh, voltage range for the supply. And then here you can see what the output voltage is and how it scales with temperature. So this is the reason that you need to set the correct reference for an ADC. It's because you'll notice here that the uh, full scale output here over this temperature range, which is likely the temperature range that you would intend to measure with this particular component, is going to be essentially from 0 0.5 to about 3v3. So we would want to hook up 3v3 to our A ref pin on our Arduino shield. So to do that, I can essentially just copy this particular uh, net over to here and then I can drag it and make the connection uh, right over here to the A ref pin. So this is really the simplest way to do it as I mentioned before. And this is actually what's known as a ratio metric connection where the ratio between these two power sources is just one. We could have a ratio of, of one half or one quarter or some other ratio between these two if we were to step down this 3v3 to a lower value using like a resistive uh, voltage divider. Um, but here we're just going to use a direct connection because we already have a 3v3 uh, signal uh, coming into uh, this uh, shield board uh, from this pin. Um, so making that direct connection is a very easy way to set the reference. Um, the next thing we would want to do is, of course, we'd also want to set uh, VDD to the appropriate value. Um, here, we can just use the 5 volt uh, net. And if we just paste this, we can then drag it over and make the connections. And I'll just do it pretty simple like this. And there we go, we've made all of our connections. Um, the next connection that you would want to make is, of course, ground. And we can find our ground symbol right here, just kind of drag it in, throw it on here. And then we would want to connect our output uh, somewhere uh, to one of these uh, analog inputs that you see right here. So to do that, um, we can basically just use a net portal. Um, I'm going to actually just switch this around just a little bit so I can flip it and line it up with my output and then we'll name this guy temperature and then now we can just copy this and we can paste it over here and we'll again make sure to flip this so we can really easily connect this and once we make this connection um, we're basically done uh, we now have our uh, temperature sensor outputting directly to one of the analog channels uh, in our ADC and then we've applied a 3v3 reference. So this is probably the simplest temperature sensor board that you'll ever create uh, with an Arduino shield. Um, but the great thing about this system is that you can actually find a lot of other sensors and just really quickly drag them into this project and hook them up to one of these other interfaces. Um, so if you actually look at the Arduino pinout You'll notice here that there is an SPI bus um, down here 
on this set of pins. So I believe these are pins, uh, looks like 50 to uh, 53. So it's going to be this group of pins down here next to our two ground connections. So if we go back to our project, um, you can see here this bottom group of pins along the bottom of this uh, this symbol, um, we could use that for an SPI interface. So what that means is that if we were to find some other sensor here in the public library um, that has an SPI interface, we could actually just drag that in here and then immediately connect it to this interface. So there's a lot of different um, sensors that actually have a digital output built into the sensor interface. Um, so a good example here, if we just kind of search sensor SPI, maybe we'll find something. Um, here we actually have, for example, magnetometer. So you can see here that this has an SPI interface on it. And we could go through here and, and find plenty of other sensors that we could um, import into this, uh, into this project. Good one right here is actually the uh, gas and humidity pressure sensor from Bosch. So this is the BME 680. Um, so this is another one that we could immediately start using uh, with our Arduino. Now, of course, you want to make sure that if you're going to drag one of these other sensors into your board, that um, you, of course, scroll down here and then open up the data sheet and just check what the I.O. level is. Because these I.O.s that are uh, set here uh, in the SPI interface on the Arduino may not match the signal level that is being used for the I.O.s here in this component. So here if we just scroll through here and we look at the I.O. reference, um, we're able to see here that the uh, supply voltage for the I.O.s is anything from 1V2 to 3V3. So you just, of course, need to make sure that these uh, I.O. voltage levels match up with uh, what is being used in the Arduino. Um, so if these don't match up for this digital sensor, you would then want to use a level shifter to make sure that you shift the levels between these two so that they are compatible. Um, so that's all we've got for uh, just setting up this project, but basically what we've done is we've added in a couple of sensors um, that we can use with this Arduino, and this uh, board essentially creates like a, a simple environmental monitoring board. So it's a pretty quick way to get started building a new project, and what we'll do in an upcoming video is we'll actually show how to work with both of these sensors in the PCB layout. Now I think for some designers this can be a bit challenging because this is essentially a component that has a digital interface on it and this one only has an analog interface on it. So how do you work with both of those in the same board? Well that is uh, one of the most important things to learn about mixed signal design and that's something that we'll go over in a future video. Okay thanks everyone for watching this tutorial. This should help you get started using analog components with your Arduino shield boards. And of course, like I said before, make sure you understand what that reference pin does because that reference pin is going to determine uh, things like your accuracy and your ability to resolve certain signals above a noise floor in your analog system. And of course, once you start adding in digital sensors into your board, make sure that you follow our layout guidelines in an upcoming video so that you don't have mixed signal interference. Thanks everybody and we'll see you next time.